Today's Pentecost Sunday, I was, uh, I'm going to start where Tina left off kind of like. Do you remember the story where she talked about when Joshua was anointed, uh, the leader of the Israel people, right? The Israelites. And then they were going to cross over the Jordan River. You remember that? Yeah. So what happened? The, the, the Ark of the Covenant went first, and the priests and the leaders went next, right? They walked into the water. What did God tell the people to do? This is what's so important about church history and about our church, too, I think. I just want to make it our church. Oh, that's all. So the leaders, we're going to lead you into deeper water. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. That's what God's telling us to do. We need to go into deeper water. We're, it's fun to do what we've done. I had a great time yesterday. We have, when we do any family events, even our missional community in our houses, I love it. I love coming together, teaching, and listening to people, how God's do, doing things in their life, praying for each other. You know, not everything's all, you know, peaches and cream or nothing and cotton candy and bunnies, but I, my head was somewhere else. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Everything's not perfect in our lives, right? Some of us have problems once in a while. And so when we come together in those smaller groups, we can share that and pray for each other, encourage each other. God's got this. We can help you. And it's really a lot of fun and to see it happen. But I believe God wants us to do more. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so we're going to examine the scriptures today and look at that. Like There's more to do instead of just being all cuddly. Come on. Can I say it like that? Mm -hmm. Because we're all cuddly. We love each other. This church, I mean, we... We take care of each other. It's like an amazing little group of people we have here. I mean, seriously, if you need something, it seems like, you know, we can't, we go, we can't physically do it. We, have, we can figure it out, right? We, we do that. We go to the extra mile to do that. Moving people, whatever. You know, it's just loving on people. And it's really great. I love this. I love it. I love it. Yep. It's fun. It's great. But God is saying, come a little bit deeper. Right? Go, let's go a little bit further than what we have right now. Amen? I'm looking, I'm thinking about it in Ezekiel. When, in, in Ezekiel, it's, it says, um, Ezekiel 47. Let's go to Ezekiel 47. And it's about the water coming out of the temple. So we have the water that represents what in our, in today? What does the water represent? Anybody? Water represents... The Holy Spirit, right? Because in the New Testament, we see that out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. And we're going to talk about, if you want to read, we're not going to read all of Ezekiel 47, but the second part of Ezekiel 47 talks about the fruit trees that are lined across next to the river. And the river, all the fruit, it comes out every month, there's new fruit. So the, it's not like, you know, seasonal, like seasonal, like we have apple trees, you know, in the spring, and then we have something at the end of the fall, we get these apples. Every month they'll have apples or they'll have fruit on their, on their trees for, our, for your nourishment. And then the, the leaves of the trees are for our healing. So out of our belly, I'm going to put a, we're going to talk about Pentecost in a minute, but out of our bellies, out of us, the Spirit of God is in us, and the river, river of God flows out of us, in us, there's, there's healing in the Word of God that brings deliverance and wholeness to people in need, amen? And God is telling you and me today, we need to go a little bit deeper in that river so we can produce all those wonderful things that you read in the second part. But let's just go to the first part, or verse 3, let's go to verse 3. And, and I'll shorten this up just a little bit. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured out a thousand cubits and then led me through the water. But the water was what? Ankle deep. It's interesting how the Word of God in the Old and New Testament always comes together. You know what the first miracle that happened with Peter and John on the way to the temple after they were filled with the Holy Spirit? Huh? What was the first? He told, there was a crippled man begging for food, right? He was begging for a, a life, his living. And Peter and John said, Hey, silver and gold have I none, but such that I have in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And written it, right after it says, And his feet and ankles gain strength. His feet and his ankles gain strength. And what did he do after that? He began to praise 
God and glorify God. Hallelujah. God wants you to get your ankles a little bit deeper and strengthen them this morning as we get deeper in the water. Amen? That's why that doesn't make sense. You'll get it. We, God wants us to do more. Amen? I think, well, is that just me wanting the church to do more so we have more members? No. I want to see the gospel glorified in our city and in your lives. Amen? I want you to have a confidence to know that the Spirit of God is leading you to do something that you probably never did before. Maybe speak to somebody or be bold about the gospel and who Christ is in your life, but I'm like, I'm only in the water. I'm praising God because He saved me. Right? He healed me. He delivered me. I'm, pray I'm in the water just a little bit. I'm dancing around, praising Him. Hallelujah. And look what happens next. Amen? He says, He measured off another thousand cubes, and He led him in the water, and it was, his, it was knee deep. Have you ever been in the water knee deep? You can kind of, you kind of can stand, if you're in the ocean water, especially when the waves come in, if you're knee deep in the ocean water, you can feel the waves. Right? But you're still kind of in control because you can still walk. Mm -hmm. Right? I can still, okay, I can make it to church on Sunday. Yeah, that's cool. I can, uh, like, I can go to missional community. I, I, I got this, right? I, I can do a little bit of help here, a little bit of help there, you know? Um, I'm good. I'm still in control of stuff. I look at my wallet. Okay, I got, all right, I got this much money, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I can tie, and I can give a little extra. Right? We got it. We're in control of it. Did I say that? I did say that. I'm telling you, God wants to go deeper. Wants to take us a little bit further in the walk. He wants to, he wants to overwhelm you with His presence. We sang about it. Amen? He wants you to be full of His glory. Amen? And the Bible tells us that you and me are the glory of God in the earth. Shine up your armor. Look like the glory of God. Amen? Let's quit going, I remember Pastor Andrew teaching a while back. Let's quit going back to the baby food, the baby things of the Word of God. Let's go back to repentance. Let's quit going back to all those things that are so easily, that, that God said, those are just elementary things in the Word. Let's go to some deeper stuff. How do you, you want to go deeper? Do you want more of God than you ever had before? I think God's going to do that today. I believe God wants you to have that today. He's going to pour into you today so much more than you ever can imagine. Your thoughts, your heart are going to be pure before God. How, how many like that, right? Yeah. I want to be pure, my heart, my mind, I want to be pure before God. So I'm going to get in the water. I'm going to, I'm going to get past that knee-deep stuff, and I'm going to go a little bit further. It says this, he, went, uh, he went off another uh, uh, cubic, 100 cubits. No, he measured off another thousand, and then he uh, led me through the water that was up to my waist. You ever go in the waist, even in the river, right? If you ever been in a river, waist deep water, that's a little, you're tippy toes, right? Especially if it's moving, you can kind of move around a little bit, right? Kind of, it's kind of hard to get a hold of it. Yes, bro? Your Bible say come out to the waist, my say come out to the knee. Yeah, well, the next one is waist, right after that. You just said waist, not Okay, verse 4. And then verse 5. He measured off another thousands, but now it was, it was a river, and I could not cross, because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, in my Bible. A river that no one could cross. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? He's saying, God is saying, look at this. I want you to go in the water. Now, have you ever been, now, I've been in the ocean, east coast, west coast. I've been in some rivers. There's some places where you could walk, when the, when the high tide was in, you could walk for really far off in the ocean because of the low tide. tide. You could walk out just knee deep water, but as the tide came in, it got big, it got deeper and deeper and deeper. And just look at a river. You can, some rivers you can walk out, and all of a sudden there's a drop off. Right? You walk, 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 all of a sudden a drop off, and the river's just moving, right? That's where God wants us to be. In His river. What does that look like today? What does that look like if we're in the river all the way where we, the water is actually pushing us? And remember what I said earlier. Even in John, it says, the river, the rivers of living water that flows out of you, 
is the Spirit of God. There's no mystery in the Word of God. It's not like, what is he talking about? No, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's saying, let's go past what we were confident in, or maybe we look past when we were born again, or first accepted Jesus. Like, let's get past, hey, I'm toddler stage, I'm just kind of like understanding a little bit of the Word I'm reading, right? We, so most of us in this room, we should be all the way in the water. What does that look like today? To me, I'm going to explain what I think is what To you, I think maybe there's some different definitions, or maybe not different definitions, but maybe some different purposes in our lives. We're going to get in the river of God, we're going to flow with the Spirit of God, and we're going to do what the Spirit of God wants us to do. Because in the New Testament, when we read that, we find out, we read, now this is, oh, this is what Ezekiel, right? This is a prophetic word about what's happening, that's going to happen in the future. He said, we're going to, Jesus is going to come and die on the cross for me and you. Yeah. Right? I know, because of that, my sins are forgiven. <laughs> I'm free from my past. I'm a new creature. Old things are passed away. I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord, I'm a different person. I don't think like I used to think. I think differently now because when I see somebody in need, I have compassion. I never had compassion like that before. When I see a person that is struggling, I want the first thing I want to do is want to help them. When I saw that dad with those two kids and we were fishing and all the kids were having fun, the first thing, I didn't think about the kids that were there having fun. I was thinking about that daddy who probably couldn't afford a fishing pole for his kids. And at that moment, it was an opportunity to bless them and say, here, why don't you use one of ours, right? And the little boy caught a fish. I said, like, that's really exciting. Aww. He was jumping and excited. It was amazing. Dad had a big smile on his face. Then his little girl caught a fish. And then they left. Because they had somewhere to go. His name was Tim. I'm going to pray for Tim. I hope I can see him again when I go there. So that's all that. Remember in Mission Community, we talked about being life on life. That's life on life. We're out there doing stuff. Right? And then I'm on mission because in my life on life stuff, I'm going to be like Jesus. Right? I'm going to take the time to listen to the Holy Spirit to do that. To bless that person and hopefully, hopefully lead them to Jesus. The little boy that stole my fishing pole. I found it. I got it back. I didn't make a thing out of it. Brought it back to where we were at. And he came by and he was going to take it while we were eating lunch. Like, this is my fishing pole. <laughs> he lives in the area. He probably doesn't have a dad. He probably just there. You know, because he was there early on Saturday. You know, you just tell. Man, my heart was just like broke, right? Yeah. And I. Uh, you know, I'm thinking I want to give him that fishing pole. But that's like one of my best fishing poles. Too, so I <laughs> but I talked to him, and he said, that's mine. I said, no, I brought that fishing pole. And he knew we got caught, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so we talked afterwards. So next Saturday, I'm picking him up. There's a fishing event uh, at Warner Park, June 2nd, for children. The first 300 kids get a free fishing pole with Rod and Rio. So we're going to take them over there. And we're going to... We're gonna, I'm gonna bless that little boy, but I'm gonna meet him. I'm gonna meet his parent or his mom. I don't know who his guardian is, but I'm gonna find out who he is. We're flowing in the river. We're doing what the Spirit of God is telling us all the time. It's not like we, well, I'm gonna wait till Sunday so I can praise the Lord and be a Christian. It's like being a Christian all the time because you're moving in the river. That's what this means. Jump in, all the way in. God, I don't want to stay up, because listen, this is the bless me part. I'm ankle, knee deep, I'm getting blessed, I'm praising God. Tina, that was great worship today, you know, and, and you know, good meal too on Sunday, on Monday night, that's awesome, right? It's about me, me, me. But when you read the Word of God, any part of it, you'll see that it's all about sacrifice. It's about glorifying Jesus in our everyday life. It's about lifting up the name of God in all that we do. We find out well, even in your work you got to glorify God. I want doing my job. Do whatever I do, do it for the glory of God. Amen? Why? Because you're an example to Jesus to the people you work with. That doesn't mean you don't get upset or get mad or have emotions. <laughs> that, that happens to all of us. But the key is that we're lifting up Jesus all we do. And in this example, in this prophetic word of, of Ezekiel, I would go, if you go and read the rest of Ezekiel, do that this afternoon. You'll see that the river brings healing through the, the trees that are planted. Fruit is coming off of you. Joy and love and peace and patience and all those things that are part of the fruit of the Spirit is part of your life. Why? I mean, crisis is happening in your life. Your, your car doesn't work. This doesn't happen. This is broken. You're upset. 
you know, you want to be, and the Holy Spirit comes in and you say, no, I'm not going to let my circumstances control who I am. Amen? I'm not going to let my circumstances uh, control my emotions so much that I don't glorify God. I can't let my circumstances hold me back from God's blessing in my life. I can't let my circumstances control the way I feel about the people I'm around. It's, it, it can't happen. I'm in the river. It's at that moment we can say, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me, Holy Spirit, to see as God sees the situation so I can look at it like you do, God, not like I'm seeing it right now. God wants us to have victory. How can we have the fruit of the Spirit in our lives where people want desire it and want to eat it or bring to take the leaves off the trees and get healed if we're not acting like what Christ was like? Is that okay? Am I too rough today, this morning? Huh? No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants more. I want to lead you to deeper water. I'm saying, let's, let's, let's get out of the bless me part. Let's get into the working part. Amen? Let's get in. Let, I, I love blessing you. I love praying for you. I want to see you a joy and full of glory. I want to see you dance around the church. I, want, I, I love that. That's part of being a pastor. See, you know, I like a, a shepherd with a sheep. I mean, a shepherd is really happy when all the sheep are running around and having fun. But when the wolf comes, the shepherd gets mean. I can, I can protect you, all right? I don't have a problem with that. But there's a joy of the Lord that's your strength. God wants to bless you. I'm saying to you, let's go. We're taking the Ark of the Covenant. We're taking God's presence, and we're going deeper. And we're going to, what we're going, listen, what we're going to is a place of victory. Think about what happened to the children of Israel after they crossed the Jordan River. You know what happened? Who, who can tell? Who's my Bible scholars are? What was the first thing that happened? They got on the other side. What was the city on the other side? Jericho. Jericho. There's a big battle about to happen. And God showed them that every battle that you're going to have after you cross into the promised land, I'm going to give you victory. But you've got to do what I say. And God gave him specific instruction on how to win that battle. And at the very end, they took that last little circle around that city. And instead of bringing out their swords and attacking the city, what did they do? They shouted. Because that's exactly what God told them to do. Hallelujah. How, I mean, as a children of Israel, think about that. I'm walking in. I mean, God won this battle for us. Amen? God took care of the enemy. God helped me overcome the situation. And then after that, what happened after that? Then they tried to take control of the battles, right? They started doing their own thing. But that's okay. We won't get to that until a few weeks from now. <laughs> but God wants to take us from where we're at to have victory. But he's going to give us the instruction on what to do each day, each moment of your day and our day. Amen. As we plan for the future of Capital City Church, we're planning that we have walk and flow in the power of God's Holy Spirit because that's what he gave us. He says, not by power, not by might, but not by my education, not by my own plans, not by my own finances, but not by anything, but only by the power of God that we can have victory in this city. Amen. How many believe that? I'm with it, right? Then you got to go from where you're at to getting a little bit deeper and doing what God's told us to do. Amen? Um, the Father gave us a gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? He says that I would give you a good gift. If you ask, I'm not going to give you a serpent, a stone, right? He's going to give you exactly what you ask. And the gift of the Holy Spirit is for you and me today. Amen? To walk in the Spirit, it gives us life, not bondage. There's freedom in the Spirit of God. They're not, it's, not, it's not like a burden. Pastor, you're giving me too much to do. No, all I have to do is walk in the Holy Spirit. Right? You're, there's so many rules in your church. There's not a lot of rules. I'm asking.
asking you to do this. Do what this says. Amen? Every member of our church, we go through the whole thing. You go through our, our, our class as members, it talks about what? The gospel, the gospel, the gospel. We're going to glorify Jesus, amen? Do this. Now, say, well, it's hard. It is hard, you know? So we look at, let's turn your Bible to Acts chapter 2. It is hard. It's not easy. We know that. But, oh, I'm sorry. Go to Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to go to James. Is that all right? Can I do that? Anybody getting anything out of this today? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. James, where's James at? I can't find his lost it in my Bible. So let me check it out. It says this. We should be Where are you? James 122. James 122, here we go. It says. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Huh. Don't be hearers of the word only. That's the King James Version. Don't be hearers of the word only. Do it. Maybe I should put a t-shirt on. We are not just hearing the word. We're doing the word. No, I don't know if that would make your t-shirt on. But just do it. That's already taken so, uh, right? Is that the logo? We put our logo on and say, just do it. And people go, like, hey, that, you just stole that from Nike. So, yeah. But it's, so we're doing, hearing the word of God. We're being encouraged by the word of God. But now I think James is saying, okay, that's good. I like that. Uh, uh, Francis Chan, he said, he was telling his daughter about cleaning his room, her room. His pen in his book called, um, what's the name of the book? Was it Saturated? Is it Saturated? No, it was in, um, I can't remember the name of the book. But anyway, he's talking about his daughter. He tells his daughter, why don't you go clean your room? And he comes back a couple hours later, and the room was still dirty. And he goes, well, I was, trying, I was just memorizing what you told me. His daughter told his dad, why don't you clean your room? Well, I was just memorizing it. And then, he, then she says, well, I'm gonna, and then this afternoon, I'm going to have my girlfriends come over, and we're going to talk about it, how to, how to clean my room. Right? And, and he, but the room never gets cleaned, right? It's like going, I come to church on Sunday, I do this, I do that, I do all these wonderful things. We're not doing the Word. So it's not just about memorizing the Word. It's not about just hearing the Word and Sunday morning. It's actually doing the Word that brings faith in our lives to cause us to do the miraculous. We all say, why well, want signs and wonders to follow those that believe? How many heard that before? The Bible, right? I, signs and wonders will follow those that believe. Uh, this is me. This is Pastor Bob. Okay, do it. <laughs> like, okay, where are the signs and wonders? Like, how come on Sunday morning, I don't hear from you guys, like, I laid hands on my, my neighbor who was sick and God raised him from the dead. Or when I raised him up. Raised him from the dead, would be pretty awesome too. I went to the funeral home and prayed out of the casket and the guy jumped out of the casket. I mean, that'd be awesome. The whole funeral home got saved, right? <laughs> Everybody was there. The, the, the funeral director, the, the, the guy, the mortician guy, uh, the, 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 everybody got saved. The whole family that got saved. Ah, would that be a sign? Signs? This, this, so this is my, when I think of when I read the Word of God and I ponder the Word of God and I meditate on it just like you guys do, I'm thinking, I'm reading this. I'm thinking, I'm a believer. Like I said yes to Jesus. I was forgiven. God called me in the ministry. Signs and wonders will follow all those that believe. That's you and me, right? Am I right? I'm not taking this out of context, right? This is for us today. I'm going to do it. Like, let's go practice laying hands on sick people or dead people or whatever. I don't know. Right? Pray for your neighbor. Pray for those that are struggling financially. Pray for those. Pray for... Give what, do it. I'm kind of excited about that. That means I have to get out of my comfort zone a little bit and kind of do stuff in my neighborhood around, get involved in some associations, get around people. You know, it's kind of hard to see signs. I mean, it's good, let, don't get me wrong. I love my Wednesday night. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. It is so much fun. It is, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, Kevin. It's like, 
It's great, right? But like, what are we doing? <laughs> we're taking care of each other, we're loving on each other, we're praying for, we have great prayer time, we had great communion time on uh, this past Wednesday, right? That was good stuff. I mean, you guys left, I was like, wow, that was great. That was awesome! That was sleep. Right? It was awesome. God wants to, you know, it, it's awesome. But there is a mission that God has for you and me, and that's to be the light of the world and preach God's well, Let's look at this. I'm going to, I'm kind of, I'm going to bring this plane down. Okay, I'm going to lay in this. This is how the teacher told me right there. We're going to bring this in, all right? Look at, look at Acts chapter 2. Or right, Acts chapter 1. Let's go Acts 1.8. It says, Acts 1.8, I'm back and quote it. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses. We've heard this millions of times here in this church, in Jerusalem, and in, Samaria, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Okay? So the Holy Spirit's going to come on the, the, the disciples, and they're going to be witnesses all over the world. If we just say, like, just look at it as a historical event, it's going to happen. The Holy Spirit, as God the Father, is going to give to the apostles, and they're going to be ma amazing, right? So look at what happens. And then look at verse, um, uh, chapter 2. It says, When the day of Pentecost, which is actually what we celebrate today, came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing, violent wind came and from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. I, I, watched, a vi I watched a video reenactment of this. It was kind of funny. It was like, some, you know, anyway, you know, it was on the History Channel, so they were like trying to reenact this, you know, like the wind coming in the room and everything. Woo! And anyway, anyway, it started speaking. It was, it was kind of funny. I don't know what it'd be like, but that first day was amazing, right? Because they received a gift, not only the salvation that Jesus provided, but also had the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it says, and they saw this, it would seem like tongues of fire that separated and, and came on the rest of each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to do. So, I, and then you go see that all these different languages from all the people that were in Jerusalem at the time, they, were, they, they heard their languages, and they thought they were drunk, right? They thought they were drunk. Amazed, in, in verse 12, amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they had too much to drink. But then Peter, this is the key. Why did the Spirit of God come? Remember, it's for purpose to be a witness. They knew that in the first part. They knew it before Jesus was dying and the Spirit of God was coming. The Spirit of God came on them and they began, they began to be witnesses. And immediately when they heard people laughing and joking about it, Peter stood up and gave this beautiful sermon. You can just memorize this sermon and tell people about it. Like, you know, what do I tell people? This is what you tell people. The Jesus that was crucified and was arrested, that was, that was beaten, spit upon, and made fun of, and died on the cross, was beaten, whipped beyond recognition. That Jesus is the one that took your sins away. And, and you can go and read the whole thing. But then what, I love the second part of this. He says, he gives a witness of what happened. This was a prophetic word that was given by Joel that was going to happen. I'm sorry, I looked at a little ahead of myself there. The second part was the preaching. This part is vitally important to our church today. This part is, needs to be filled in every church in, a, in the world. Mm -hmm. This part is, needs to be preached from pulpits to encourage the people to understand the power you have. This part is vitally important because we, we dismiss this and realize we can't do what God's asking to do unless the Spirit of God is with us. Now this part I teach over and over in our group, but I want to share with you again. Look at Mark, he says, in the last days, verse 17, in the last days, that started when Jesus died on the cross. Okay? When Jesus resurrected, when he came out of the grave, that started the last days. He says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. What does it say on the next two words in your Bible? On all people. All people. Not just the Jewish people that he was talking to. Peter was talking to. This is for all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. How many here are a son and a, or a daughter? Raise your hand. If you're a son, raise your hand. If you're a daughter, raise your hand. 
Okay, all right, all right, everybody, all right, good. Um, <laughs> your young man, who's young here, who's a young man? Dion, go ahead and raise your hand, yeah. Kevin, I'm a little older now. <laughs> uh, Angel, a little older, you know, we've got some, okay, young men, we've got some young men here. Young men will see visions. What are the visions that they're going to see? This is important. They're going to see God move in the world. God's going to show them things and visions about what the ministry, what they're supposed to do. God's going to show them how they can preach the gospel and, and overcome the enemy. That, that, those are the visions that you're going to see. It's nothing different than they saw in the Old Testament. The visions that God gave uh, Ezekiel and Daniel and Jeremiah, those are the visions that you're going to see. God's going to show you those. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he wants you to know what's happening. Old men like Lewis, all right? Lewis, <laughs> it says... Old men will dream dreams. Why? Because the old generation has to show the younger generation. Amen? All the hard work, the prayers and the ministry and the labor and the finance, all that you did is worth it. God's going to give you a dream to say, yes, it's going to happen. Maybe he won't use us anymore. Maybe we, we ran out a little bit of energy. But the next generation, I believe this with all my heart. I was telling, I forget who I was telling the group, I wanted to say, the next generation, the 18, 19, 20, 20-year-old, 20 30-year-old, they're going to be on fire. And that's the older generation that kind of screwed up things in the past. I, I blame myself. So we're going to say, no, the truth is in the Word of God. We're going to point the younger generation to the Word of God. You have the power to overcome all the junk that's been taught in this world and know that the truth is there because the Spirit said He will lead you to all truth. And I'm here to stand here today and say, yes, young people. The Spirit of God will lead you to where you need to go. Yeah. Don't dismiss what the, what's saying here in Acts. It's power that you need to be the witness and stand firm for God. Amen? Yeah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen with you and us together teaming up. It's not all the old people or the young people. I'm tired of everything being separated. Or that culture or this culture. It's garbage. We're one culture. We're one God. One Savior. One Spirit over all of us that controls all of us. If we get that right, the church will be powerful like it's supposed to be in the book of Acts. And then on your way to church, I don't have silver. I don't have gold because I'm poor too. But what I have, you can have in the name of Jesus rise up and walk. And their ankles become strong. And their feet become strong. And they can walk in the ways of God because you're leading them in there. I believe that's what we're going to. I believe God, that's what God wants. He wants us to fulfill this now. Not wait. It's not something in the future. It's now. Can you say it with me? It's now. now. It's now. now. Amen. I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Now listen. Prophecy is nothing but foretelling what God's done or going to do. Everybody can do that. That's why it's, we have gifts. We have the five-fold ministry. There's an office of a prophet. I believe that. But here it's saying that everybody, all people, can prophesy. But we don't because we don't feel like we're worthy. We don't because we have sin in our life. And we, we, the Spirit of God is trying to deal with that so we can be pure and holy and yes. sanctified. So He can yes. use us in the prophetic gifts and all the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. We've got to quit worrying about ourselves and what we're not good enough and start to realize that we are good enough because God has chosen you. Yeah. Every one of you in this room, God has chosen you. That's why you're here. Amen. That's why you're here. Amen. God's chosen you to believe this word that you can prophesy. Preach the gospel. That's all it is. And while you're preaching the gospel, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you through the gift of knowledge or, or, or a prophetic word for the person that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. right? He's not going to hold that back. He doesn't hold no gifts from you. Read Corinthians chapter 11, 12. He doesn't want to hold any gifts back from you. He wants you to have, operate all those gifts so you can minister to your family, your loved ones, your neighbors, whoever needs to hear the word of God. God wants to empower you. I will show you, and this is the next part that's coming in this prophecy. I will show you wonders in heaven above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. We just had a volcano go off in, in, in Hawaii. You talk about billows of smoke? I don't know if that's what this is talking about. 
But I know some people in Hawaii are questioning the gods that they're worshiping. And some Christians need to go to Hawaii and share with them there's a hope in Jesus Christ. Even if you lose your home and everything, Jesus loves you. Amen? And the God that you're worshiping could protect you from the volcano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to Hawaii with me, right? I'm telling you, Dave, you wonder, anytime there's a tragedy, it's always a time mm -hmm. where we can help, of course, you know, like we do. America's good at that, helping. But there's some believers need to go and share Jesus. There's we don't hear about the stories on the news of thousands of Christians that sacrificed and gave and helped and led people to Jesus. It's, it's Even in Texas, when they had the hurricanes and the floods, it's amazing, but we never hear about that. But God wants to use you. Just... Get it in the water. Get in the deep end of the pool. I can't swim very good. Well, God's not gonna let you drown. That's right. God's not gonna. When you're in that river That's and you're right. flowing in the spirit and you're talking to people and loving on them, and God's gift pouring into you what you need to tell them, He's not gonna let you. You don't have to worry about the things you're gonna speak. The Holy Spirit will speak through you. And when you're done, you go. <laughs> God used me like that was awesome right that's the joy you get like wow I got to pray for that person got to lay hand on them that shriveled hand became whole guys get in the river amen you ready yeah and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved because they heard you speak the truth they heard you prophesy. They heard about your vision and your dream. They saw the signs and wonders. Hallelujah. God wants to use you. It's nice to get feel comforted by God. It's nice to feel his hugs and his laughter over you. It's great. I love that. I love sitting on my chair and reading my Bible, you know. Being in God's presence. I love that. It's, it's, I, I love coming to church on Sunday morning and feel His presence and love it on you guys. I just love it. There, I have no, there's no other agenda in my life. But we're going in the river. This leadership team says, We're going. We want, we want you to follow up. Because we're, we're not going to be in the shadow end any longer. We're going in the deep end. We're going in the deep end. Hallelujah. You ready? Let's do that. Let's stand. Linda and Tina, just can you put some music down, William? And we're going to pray. I want Linda to come up and pray. I can't even come up and pray. Hallelujah. Ten minutes to twelve, so I well pass the Bible. You want to get in the river? Come on, let's pray together. God help us to go from ankle deep. Maybe you're maybe you're knee deep already. Maybe you're up to your waist already. Maybe you have a great relationship with God and things are going good. Good. I'm glad. Do it. Do more. Do more. But I believe God wants us to go a little bit deeper. Not only as individuals, but as a, as a church family. To, to take it deeper. And look around this room. He's going to use everybody here. Here, right here. Whoever's here right now. I know a lot of some people call. They couldn't make it today. That's fine. I'm glad they call. I appreciate that. We're, we believe God's going to use all of them too. But this church, this Capital City Church as a whole, we're going deeper. And we'll get in the river. And the Holy Spirit wants you to do the same. Flow with Jesus. If that's you today, if you say, yes, I want to go deeper, then come. Let's, let's pray for you. Ladies, come over here and pray with Tina and, and Linda. And um, the guys, come over and pray with Kevin. And we're going to pray for you and believe that God's going to do those, uh, those things. We're going to pray that you see visions and dreams. Amen. We're going to pray when you prophesy and you open your mouth and begin to speak to people. God gives you the words. Amen. Because He's going to give it to you. That's what the Word has promised us. Come on. Come. Whoever wants to come, come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.